Hello, sweet friends. Thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to take scrap wood and turn it into beautiful home decor. To embellish our wood, we are going to be using images printed on tissue paper and I have these gorgeous images linked for you below. We're also going to be using fabric and tin cans. So let's go ahead and get these projects started. For my scrap wood projects, I'm using a combination of stain and paint on some of these. This one is actually going to remain just a stained board. These two started as just stained, and then I'm going to be painting this one over the top like I did here and distressing that back with a little bit of sandpaper. And then these two boards here will be solid white. But you can paint your projects any color that you choose. The stain that I used is the Craft Smart Gel Stain, and this one is in Walnut. After all of our paint and stain has dried, we'll move on to the next step in the process. In last week's video, I made these door hangers, and this one was embellished with lavender and this one was embellished with hydrangea. And that is the inspiration behind these two signs right here. I printed these images on tissue paper, and it's just regular tissue paper that you get in the gift section. And I taped it to cardstock and sent that through my printer. It's smeared a little right here because there was a fold in the paper. Now I'm not gonna need the words here because I'm gonna be stamping mine, but I just made these free printables for you in case you wanted to do a similar project. So after you remove the paper from your cardstock, Take some scissors and it's easier if you use scissors with smaller blades to cut around and get into those smaller details. And we're just going to keep cutting, eliminating as much of the white as possible. So you can see after painting and sanding just how nice and weathered that the board looks. I also have holes drilled at the ends here, and that's what I'm going to be using for my hangers. And now that I have cut my images all out, I'm going to be using some matte Mod Podge to decoupage them into the middle of each of my boards. And you want to make sure your printed images are nice and dry before you use them in your project. You don't want your ink to smear. And you can see when you print your images on tissue paper, it almost melts into the background when you apply that Mod Podge. I'm going to let this one dry. We'll go ahead and move on to applying our lavender. I like to do half the image at a time. Thin coat of Mod Podge, and then start in the middle and tap the image down. Then lay the rest back and complete the other side. And then once the Mod Podge has dried on each of my boards, I will come back and coat the entire board with the Mod Podge just so it has a consistent appearance. Using my Iron Orchid Designs typesetting stamps and the color Bluebird, I'm going to stamp the word Hydrangea across the front of our board here. After putting on the Mod Podge, it was very shiny and I was afraid that the ink was not going to stick. So I did go back over it with some sandpaper just to kind of take some of the shine off of the board. And I've positioned the letters how I like them on my quilt ruler. Now I'm going to load my stamps with ink, line it up, press it down, and then walk my fingers over all of the letters to make sure I've got good transfer of the ink to the wood below. And I love how that looks. Now I need to take the A and put this down here to finish my word. And I really love how this turned out. I think that is so pretty. Well, let's move on to our lavender. And now using my archival ink in the color Deep Purple, we're going to do the same thing and stamp the word lavender on this sign. Just gorgeous. Oh, I love this. I 
I just love how these little signs turned out. Now after my ink dries, I'm going to coat them with some of the Rust-Oleum Matte Clear and then I'm going to take my large jute twine and put those through the holes on either end and use that as my hangers. I just love how these little wood signs turned out. All right, guys, let's go ahead and move on to our next project. Several weeks ago, I used these images from the Graphics Fairy to create these beautiful lavender sachets on fabric. This week, I have printed these images on tissue paper, ready for us to decoupage on our next scrap wood project. Again, we're going to closely trim our images to eliminate most of that white background. Place all your images down, and then use your Mod Podge to adhere them to your boards. And they are going to be so cute. And I'm going to come back over the top and just seal the whole thing down. Once my Mod Podge dried, I put on some of my favorite laces and trims, and I'm going to be selling these at my vendor market, but these would make a great gift for someone crafty, or they would also look really pretty in your craft room for storage as well. So let's go ahead and move on to our next project. For our next scrap wood project, I'm going to be taking some flour sack cloth and I'll be using my stapler to attach that to make little wall pockets that we're going to be tucking our little florals in. After painting, there was a little bit of chippiness going on and I really liked that. So to enhance the look of that chippiness, I'm going to be using my Crackalore stamp to add some texture to the wood. And I'm also using black ink. And that is quick and easy crackle texture right there. So now let's go ahead and get our fabric pockets attached. I'm using the side hem of my flower sack cloth to give a little more stability to my pocket. And because I want my hem to look finished, I'm going to tuck in these edges and staple everything down. So I'm going to tuck this in and wrap it kind of like you would if you were wrapping a gift, just to give that a nice finished edge on the sides. Trim my excess, fold that under, and staple it down. So it looks nice and neat on the back. And my husband has a keyhole router bit, and it makes a nice little way to hang these. And now I'm going to be using my crockery stamps to add a little bit of interest to the front of our pockets. That is so cute. That's going to be adorable. I really, really like that. I just love those stamps. Those crockery stamps are some of my favorites. So super cute. Tuck some florals in there. Oh my goodness, that's just adorable. Well, let's go ahead and move on to our next project. For our last project, we're going to be making another wall pocket, but this time we're going to be using a tin can. The finish on the can is a little bright for me, so I'm just going to give it a quick coat of the Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant. To add interest to the details on the can here, I'm going to be applying white wax with a soft brush, and then I'll come back over with a lint-free rag and dab off the excess. So that really leaves the wax in the details there and gives such a nice finish to the can. So Mr. Shabby put a screw in there and it's countersunk so it won't be scratching anybody's wall. We're going to put some florals in there and that is just going to be so super cute. Now all I need to do is give you a closer look and show you how adorable all of this week's projects turned out.
love it when you stop by and I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe for more kind of shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. And until next week, my sweet friends, be blessed. Thank you.